Today is August the 12th, 2012, <clears throat> and I uh, recently received an email from Mike asking me about um, comparing the uh, these Tektronix SG oscillators. I happen to have an SG505, a 502. The 505 is uh, these two guys right here. The one that's hooked up that has the uh, wire coming out of it right now. Right here is what we're going to use. And then the function generator, which is this one right here. This is a uh, function generator uh, 501A. And then right down here we have a 502. The one on the very left. It doesn't have a display. And I'm going to compare them and uh, make some evaluation of how they can be used to evaluating high-end amplifiers. Okay, well, I'm watching it here on an oscilloscope. They'll all look the same. They all look perfect. You can't tell the difference. I've got them all adjusted to uh, plus 10 dBm, which is about 2.4 volts. Uh, the SG505 right now is running. At, they're all running at a kilohertz right there. You can see that 1,002. A little bit of the wires in the way a wee bit. Right here. There's our frequency. They're all going to be running at a kilohertz. And right now we're using the, uh, the SG505 when it has the white and green uh, cable coming out of it. You can see its distortion is 0036 at uh, 2.42 volts, that's 10 dBm at a kilohertz. And there's its spectral display right there. I've got the uh, spectrum analyzer set up to start for the uh, frequency at 1 kilohertz to, to begin at start instead of center. So that big pulse is the 1 kilohertz and you don't see any harmonics. It's in uh, logarithmic mode. Okay. So that's what it looks like. That's what its distortion is, 0036. Now I'm going to move the cable right here, the white and green cable, from the SG505 down to the SG502, the one on the left down here. that's there. There's our cable. And here's our distortion. It's 0.225, same amount of voltage, 2.42, 10 dBm, 1 kilohertz, and there's its spectral output. Don't see much. Now I'm going to move over to the function generator. The function generator distortion as you see rises from up to 0.37 same voltage 10 dBm kilohertz and there's its spectral output so um, while I think all of these instruments are absolutely beautiful love them all they all have a, a purpose when it comes to testing high-end audio amplifiers you're going to need something that uh, you're going to need an instrument that uh, an oscillator that produces a very low amount of distortion otherwise what you measure at the output is going to be a product of the input and not a product of the uh, the distortion products of the amplifier itself so there you go there's a comparison right off the uh, function generator is an absolutely marvelous device. The one that's hooked up with the white and green uh, uh, markers on it. And there's its distortion. There's its output. There's what it looks like on an oscilloscope. They all look the same. You can't see any anomalies in the oscilloscope. But you can sure see it right there. You can see it right there in that uh, 
spectrum analyzer. This is just a little Jim Dandy spectrum analyzer. They're not too hard to find on uh, eBay. They're um, good from, I think they're rated from 5 hertz to 50 kilohertz. Um, it's in uh, logarithmic mode, so we could measure, we could get into all measuring the, uh, the levels, but we're not going to get too involved in that. And I have it sweeping at, uh, let's see, um, 2 kilohertz. I can see that. Darn it. This is so hard to see sometimes. Yeah, 2 kilohertz per. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that's all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And that is, uh, thanks to Mark, another one of my good friends out on uh, YouTube. And I think uh, he gave me a, a very good suggestion there. So you can see all the harmonics, quite a few. Now, if you use this function generator, which we have hooked up right now, as an input to your high-end audio amplifiers, you're not going you're not going to be able to evaluate your amplifier very well because. Well, we're putting in 0.37 percent. We're getting these kind of distortion products out, and if your amplifier is better than that, and many of them are, you're going to uh, get a false reading of your uh, of your measurements. So there you go. That's the comparison of uh, of those instruments, the SG505 which is as low as 0008 percent, 8 parts per million. I don't know the, the specifications for this. It, it can all be uh, looked up easily enough. And then the uh, SG502, which is uh, this little jewel down here. I use this uh, particular setup in that three bay arrangement for uh, RF. And these three right here give me from very low frequencies, mid, all the way up to a little bit over a gigahertz. So that's the way I do it. So there you go. I hope that helps and uh, helps those that have to, that want to make very discriminating measurements on their audio equipment. You need a, at least a 502 in my opinion. Let me hook it back up to the 502 and you'll see that it's actually quite good. Back to the 502. It's distortion. It's THD. It's still 0.2. So even it is not good enough. It just really isn't. 0.211. Same output. Don't see much there though, do we? We should focus a little better. There we go. Got a kilohertz. And then once more back to the SG505, which is just a marvelous little oscillator. It's distortion down at zero zero three five ten dBm. Looks pretty clean. So there you go. I hope this helps. I know that these uh, five hundred fives are a little hard to find, and sometimes they're pricey, and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they seem to sell for a pretty good price. So I hope this helps, and uh, good luck with all of your audio measurements.